Hey everyone, I'm Thomas and I'm a third year astrophysics student studying in Scotland and this is my channel where I talk about studying at university as well as science, specifically physics and astronomy. And if you've been watching any of my recent videos then you'll know that I've been asking for any questions about studying physics at university, studying physics at St Andrews in particular, or St Andrews University in particular. And you guys delivered. There's been a load of questions in the comment section on my recent videos, so in this video I'm going to go through and answer them. I'm also going to be having a look down in the comment section after this video, so if you have any questions that aren't answered in this video, leave them down there and I'll get back to you. In the meantime though, let's get started. Banana Physics says, I've applied this year for Physics at St Andrews. I have two questions. Did you get an unconditional offer and when did you roughly get notified about it? Well, that's actually not that hard a question to answer. Yeah, I got an unconditional, but that's not too unusual if you're a Scottish applicant. Scottish high school students apply to university normally in their sixth year. By that point, we've already achieved our Scottish hires, which are roughly on par with an AS level. Now, these are what our university offers are normally based on. So with the hires I got in my fifth year, I got into St Andrews with an unconditional offer and I actually didn't have to get anything in sixth year. I did, but I didn't have to. As for when I received my offer, that was actually around this time, maybe a couple of weeks from now. Um, mine came through, I believe it was like the 9th of February, somewhere around there. It was early February. We'd actually been told that they'd appear around early March time, but they showed up a lot sooner. Not that I was complaining. It was the last offer that came through and it was the one I really wanted. <laughs> and there's also another question from Banana Physics, which is, am I enjoying university under the current circumstances? And honestly, yeah, it's not the same. I've had, well, I had a year and a, a year and three quarters of normal university life. And I really do miss a lot of that. I miss I actually miss sitting in lecture theatres with my friends. I miss sitting in the physics cafe with them between lectures and tutorials. I miss all the societies that I normally get to go to. It's been over a year since I've been able to dance. Yeah, it's not the same, but it's not terrible. Like, I mean, I enjoy studying. I enjoy physics. And I actually get a real kick out of learning, which does make this period of time significantly easier. So yeah, I'm enjoying it on the whole. I like working, but I do miss the, I, I do miss the other things, the socialising, the societies. Frankly, I miss the kind of terrible union club, but I'm not unhappy. I'm enjoying what we're doing right now. Just wish we could have the rest too. I'm going to butcher this name. Diet Mar Lakota? I'm hoping that wasn't too brutal. Yeah, they ask, how important is the personal statement in the application process? Very. Yeah, it's, I know it's not the answer you want to hear. It, it never is. But the personal statement is what shows the university why they should let you in. For a little context, we were told in my first year that there was a roughly one in every 13 applicants for every person who got to sit in that lecture theatre on the first day in September. One in 13. And that's for physics, I don't know about other subjects. And every single one of the people applying for that course will have been up there academically. And yeah, some people will miss out on conditional offers. Some people will get offers from St Andrews and decide to take up an offer somewhere else. But a lot of people won't. A lot of people will just not get an offer. And the reason that they won't get offers will be down to the personal statement. The personal statement lets you show the university who you are. They, they're not just looking for the most academically gifted person in the world. What they're looking for are well-rounded people that will be part of the St Andrews community. They're not just looking for smarts. They've got plenty of that. Okay, one on St Andrews accommodation. Adana Okui? Okui? I'm not sure. Sorry, <laughs> is St Andrews accommodation more expensive than London? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there will be some of it will be, some of it won't be. I mean, will a flat in the middle of St Andrews cost more per month than a flat in Mayfair? Probably not. Will a flat in St Andrews cost more than one in, I don't know, 
Hackney? Possibly. St Andrews isn't cheap. It isn't. There's no way of getting around that. Yes, you can live outside St Andrews. The vast majority don't because public transport is, well, unless you went to Dundee, not brilliant. We don't get any extra student funding like you do in London. I don't know if it's more expensive. And as far as university owned accommodation goes, I'm not 100% sure. I'm in a private flat this year. I've not looked at accommodation prices in a while and I've never looked at them for London universities because I'm Scottish and get university for free in Scotland. So there was no point in really applying down south. Sorry, I couldn't be more help. Best bet's probably to look on the university websites and I guess have a look at the average rent prices for student flats in the places you're looking. Jeremy Cardina. Hi, I really like your content, so here are a few questions. What are your favourite things about St Andrews? What are your favourite traditions? Did you buy the red gown? And which academic sins have you done? And finally, please rank the accommodation buildings at St Andrews. Cheers. Okay, let's take these one at a time. Favourite thing about St Andrews? Oh, there are too many to choose from. I love school physics, I love the societies, I love the town. Um, I even love the weather, but I'm Scottish. It's cold and it's windy, but it's not wet. It's great. Um, oh, what's my... Those are my... Oh, it does say favourite things. Favourite things, plural. Okay, so I can just list the little things I like. Uh, yeah, I like the School of Physics. I like the societies. I love the town in general. I like being able to go and walk along the beach. Um, yeah, there's just... There's so many. I don't like the accommodation prices. That is a bit of a bummer. I also kind of wish there was a train station. It's a really pretty place to go to university. And it's also not loud like a city. Yeah, that's that's my favourite thing about St Andrews. What are my favourite traditions? So, in case you don't know, St Andrews has a load of student traditions. These range from the academic family system, which is the sort of mentoring buddy system, the sort of informal, and also is doing a whole thing called Raisin Weekend, which features a load of mental games and a lot of the time drinking. May Dip is pretty good. I think I'd probably have to go with May Dip for being my favourite. Only done it once because I actually wasn't in St Andrews last May because of COVID. It's a tradition that on the 1st of May, you run into the sea at dawn for good luck in your exams is to cleanse all your academic sins, which I actually think it does jump two questions ahead to what academic sins have I done? I, I don't really know. Like there's, I suppose probably carrying the gown I think is, is actually an academic sin. <laughs> I'm not hooked up with any academic family. So there's at least that. <laughs> Did I buy the red gown? Okay, so if you're not aware, St Andrews has a traditional red undergraduate gown. It's a woolen, it's a woolen gown. It's very warm. It's not only worn by undergraduates, it's not worn as much as it used to be. Um, but you'll see university publicity pictures, you'll see people walking along the pier in the red gowns. Um, in answer to the question of did I buy one, I have one, but I didn't buy it. My mum actually came to St Andrews back in the 1980s and she kept hers. And I'm only a couple of inches taller than she is. So I have her gown, like they're not, uh, they're like robes, we call them gowns, but they're, they're like robes. Um, they're not gendered, they're all the same. So yeah, that's that's what I have. There are certain traditions go along with the gown that you shouldn't carry it and you can't wear it wrong. And by wrong, I mean that every year has a different way of wearing it. So first year is wear it fully on the shoulders up, like because you're, you've just arrived at university. Second years, wear it a bit back, sort of off the shoulders. Not fully off the shoulders, but a bit, because you've been there for a bit, you're starting to come out of your shell sort of thing. Um, third years, so that's me. So we wear it off one shoulder, depending on which faculty you're part of. You wear it off your left shoulder if you're an art student, because left is where the heart is. And you wear it off the right if you're a scientist, because scientists are always right. Eh, no, we're not, but. You, you get the idea. Fourth years then wear it down off both shoulders. And then fifth years, I think they wear it the same as fourth years. Integrated masters weren't a thing you really did until a bit more recently, so there's not the whole tradition around that. I'm not entirely sure how much further you could get unless you're like dragging it along the ground. So the final question from Jeremy was, please rank the accommodation buildings at St Andrews. Oh, that's, I can't do that objectively. They're all different. Ah. <laughs> uh, Okay, there are different, there's different accommodations in St Andrews. Yeah, I can't rank these. University Hall is the best one. I'm going with that. I'm biased, but I don't care. It's my channel, come on. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Lemon the Pokey Tuber. 
has asked, what hires slash advanced hires did I do in high school? So these are the uh, qualifications that get me into university. I did higher English because most people do. It's a very useful one to have. Higher maths because, well, most people do that. It's again useful and I needed it to do physics here. Um, I did higher physics, funnily enough, as well as higher chemistry and higher music. I'm quite keen on my music as well. Continuing on to advanced higher, I dropped the English and the chemistry and did advanced hires in physics, maths and music. And that year was lovely. Um, I quite like, I really enjoyed uh, advanced higher physics. I got to do my um, project determining the wavelength of a helium neon laser, which was really fun. I got within like one nanometer, I think. So actually including error bars, I was actually like bang on. Totally luck there, but <laughs> yeah, advanced higher maths was, that well, was fine. It's not, it wasn't my favorite bit. And then advanced higher music. Well, I spent pretty much most of high school in the music department, so yeah, being able to be in the music department about two thirds of the time was pretty good. A lot of people were surprised I wasn't going to do a music degree. I wasn't good enough. I didn't want to do like teaching and I didn't want to have to travel to do music. So yeah, physics. Also, like, I just really like physics. If you haven't guessed that by this point in the video. This question from Batman. Hello, Mr. Wayne. Just wondering what types of tech you use. The tablet piqued the curiosity. So this will be a comment from my video on what apps I use in my physics degree. If you haven't watched that, go have a look. In that video, it was a, a Huawei MediaPad M5 Lite. Since then, I have upgraded. I have gone to this, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which very conveniently comes with an S Pen that I use now to write all my notes. I, know, I like the tablet. Um, as far as other tech that I use, well, uh, computer-wise, I have a computer that I built myself, um, currently running Windows 10 and now Ubuntu on a separate drive because we're doing computational astrophysics and that's based in Ubuntu using Fortran. And I want to run it natively rather than using virtual machine. Uh, I have a laptop with an HP Pavilion X360. I don't use it that often and quite, to be quite honest, it's kind of slow. It's not got enough RAM. Other than that, my phone, which I don't have on me right now. Yeah, I don't have my phone on me right now. It's, is there any other room? It's by far the most out of date, I guess. Um, it's a Samsung Galaxy S8. So that's now, what's that, four or five, five generations behind? S21 just launched. So yeah, it, I've had it for ages and I don't have any need to upgrade it yet. The battery is starting to go, but nothing on the market is sort of shouting out to me because I I cannot explain quite how much I dislike the notch and hole punched thing at the minute. Like, give me a thin bezel before you take a chunk out of my screen. I like watching stuff on my phone. I don't take that many selfies. Please stop ruining these really nice screens. Once we go to underscreen selfie cameras or something like that, or just frankly a bezel comes back, um, I'll be happy. I can upgrade my phone in peace. If my phone eventually does give up on me, I don't know, I'll buy like a OnePlus 7. I think I have the pop-up selfie camera, so at least I get the screen back. Yeah, so that's the tech I use. I've made a proper video explaining a bit more, but who knows. Three more questions. Um, Bruno Rosenthal. Uh, I am applying to some for theoretical physics, having done double maths, physics, and CS at A-level. I was wondering how people cope with jumping into second year. Jumping into second year is what we call direct entry. Compared to the rest of the UK, we have an extra year at the beginning. The reason this is there is to allow Scottish students coming in from higher level to jump straight in, because you can leave school at the end of S5 and not do advanced hires. A lot of people don't, even with advanced hires, I didn't because I wanted to consolidate my maths, as well as the fact it was free. But as far as jumping in at second year, I know a lot of people who did A-levels and did direct entry, and they've got on fine. Um, it's, it is more challenging than going in at first year if you want a more leisurely pace or you want to just have time to get used to being at university, living away from home, studying and learning in a new way, then first year, I'd, to be honest, I'd recommend first year. But yeah, people do cope with doing second year. I think I've heard that there's not actually much difference at all in attainment between people that did direct entry and people that did first year entry. Kevin Dominguez has asked, what do you think of the computer science department in St Andrews? Eh? I'm a physicist. I don't really interact with the computer science department. That being said, I have a couple of friends who are computer scientists and they say it's pretty decent. They seem to like it. This is the department, of course, that 
set up a Discord server because they were missing being able to have a chat in the labs. So that probably gives you a bit of an indication on community in that department. But it seems probably pretty good. Nothing on physics though, I mean physics is the best. And then finally from Summer Smith, do you know if I would be able to study geology as an extra subject in first slash second year with physics? Very possibly. First year are probably more likely than second year because if you don't do astrophysics, you've got a free module choice in first semester and two free module choices in second semester. So decent chance of being able to do geology from the get go there. In second year, I'm not sure. The entire first semester in second year is made up of physics and maths modules and then you've got 30 credits of choice in second semester, which a lot of people fill with maths modules. It would depend on prerequisites, which I'm not aware of, but first year, highly likely, as long as there's no clashes with lectures, yeah, most likely you can do geology. So, this has been a quick Q&A about St Andrews, physics at St Andrews, generally other questions about doing stuff at the University of St Andrews. I hope it's been interesting to you. If you have any further questions that haven't been answered here, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be down there having a, a quick response to them where I can. If there are suddenly a torrent of questions, then I'll probably make another video because Q&As are easy. In the meantime though, I've been Thomas. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Share this video with anyone you think might be interested in it and I will see you in my next video. See ya. Thank you.